which was just bang on the brakes. I'm in Monaco and I'm on the Grand Prix track here. Let's come down together here because we're going into the driver's perspective. I would make up like almost one and a half, two tenths on Lewis here. And then down here is the most difficult braking. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to F1 Fridays. And today a special one because of course it's Monaco Grand Prix coming up. And I am in Monaco and I'm on the Grand Prix track here, so I'm going to be able to take you around in a very special way today. And we're standing here in the harbour section and over on top is the, is the F1 pit lane. And uh, also for today, as always, there's going to be the opportunity for you to win a little gift giveaway from me if you get the most liked comment in this YouTube video. And the question is, what is for you the most special moment ever from the Monaco Grand Prix? What moment really stands out that you remember and that's the most special ever? So good luck with that. Comment now and see if you get the most liked comment. And for me, of course, the Monaco Grand Prix is a very special place because my school is right there. Uh, the pink building right over the F1 paddock was my school. So when I was in math class, I used to be able to look down on the legends, on Schumacher, Villeneuve. Um, that was always very, very special, inspirational moment. Um, this is my way to school, actually. So my mom would drive me through the tunnel, Raskas, every single day on my way to school. And then I managed to win three times here in a row, 2013, 14, 15, uh, in the Mercedes. So for me, that is also unbelievable memories. Um, so let's jump right into the simulator now for the hot lap. Okay, don't worry about the ghost, I had cut the corner on the other time and here just a small mistake in the last corner but apart from that it was a good lap so I hope you enjoyed that. Now we're going to jump into the slow lap where I'm going to explain you some of the details and challenges about this Monaco track. And here we go now. So the challenge going into the first corner is this is the hardest part that you're steering whilst braking so hard and when you're steering and braking so hard it really like unloads the inside front a lot because uh, you're putting lateral load on the car um, and so that's so hard to then have confidence in the braking. Okay, so this is the braking into turn one. So you can see how much of a corner that still is as you start braking, you know, you're still steering so much and you're arriving again with like 290. So it's like such a hard braking and it's very, very hard as a result that it's still a corner. And then there used to be like a big bump in the first part of braking just on the road. And for some reason, oui, bonjour. So I apologize to the police. Uh, they had said that I can just take the mask off for two seconds whilst I'm filming for you guys. Anyways, and then this one, the braking zone really benefited my style of braking, which was just bang on the brakes, super hard, and then start to go off. And Lewis, he always went like more carefully on the brakes to really try and feel the limit as he was coming on. And he, therefore he lost like a bit of deceleration in this first part because the track was just so bad suited for my style. And then in 2014 or 15, I can't remember what year, they changed the asphalt and they removed that first like bump or whatever it was. And my style didn't work anymore. Like when I did bang, the front wheel would always lock up and it just ruined the whole corner for me. And, and I would make up like almost one and a half, two tenths on Lewis here in this turn one braking every time. And then it ruined it for me. And that's why it was then, I wasn't on pole anymore in 2015. It was just much more difficult. Important here, I mean, yeah, it's third gear. So important is brake, but still carry the speed through. And then how you take the inside curb is also important. If you take too much, it throws you off. If you don't take enough, you, do, you don't get tight enough around the corner. So there's all these different things that play a role. And then exit, run it up to the barrier and up the hill, flat out into seventh gear all the way up. And uh, you're breaking into 
your seventh gear probably here. Now it could totally blind over the crest, huh? And here, don't hug the inside. Then very late, you can start touching the curb here. Then back to the middle of the track, and well, not quite. And then cut back for this late apex here. Huh? It's very important to get this apex right because that's the one that's going to help you stay all the way left. And then fourth gear for the next one and then just try and carry as much speed through here, touch the curb on the inside. Again, blind on the exit, so go as far as possible, but you need to keep steering on the exit because you've got this bump, which you need to avoid, otherwise it's gonna unload the rear end. And then down here is the most difficult braking, or one of, because it's downhill, and so you can brake a lot less uh, hard because you're, you're downhill. Um, and the, drop, the, car, the track drops away on the inside, so you lock the front end a lot. Um, so it's really, really difficult braking here. So you just kind of go over the drop, carry the speed in there, second gear, hug the inside, um, finish the braking here and, and then turn and, and so quite late end of braking and then uh, turn and get back on the power. And then here, straight line it uh, from third gear down into first, maximum, maximum steering. So you, ch you change your hands for the steering wheel here. What I used to do was I just used to take that and push it down. Um, but I would use to leave my left hand on the steering as well. And you'll see that Lewis does it very differently. What he does is also push the steering wheel down there, um, I think, or maybe even he just keeps it normal. No, I think he does push as well. But then he puts his left hand onto his leg. So he disconnects his left hand from the steering wheel. So you'll see it go on his leg. So it's quite different, quite interesting. And it's because it's such a high steering angle that you just can't keep your hands in place. So accelerating back out here, left as quickly as possible to get a good angle for the next one, upshift to second. Here, you think you could, well, why don't you run all the way to the wall on the right? But on that pavement, it's very low grip and it's very uneven. So the fastest is still to keep the left-hand side of the car on the tarmac. And then you run up over the curb a little bit with the right-hand side here. Again, go all the way out to the left. And here, you would think stay left and then cut in late to get a good run out and the exit. But actually, it's weird how this corner, it's much quicker to just dive quite narrow into the corner because um, there seems to be more grip and then you carry it wide and you get later on the power but you've made up so much time on the entry that it's just a faster way around this corner and these are all the little secrets that you only learn with time um, so that's the way to do that corner um, and now we go through the tunnel totally blind but easy flat nowadays standing here now at the tunnel exit you can see there and uh, it's 300 kilometers an hour with a Formula 1 car or just over 310 huh? So you come out there, you stay to the left, as I say, and now let's come down together here because we're going into the driver's perspective. You're sitting very, very low. So you can see the track just drops away right at the 100 meter board, which is where you hit the brakes. The track drops away totally. So A, you can't see the braking properly until you get there. B, as you're hitting the brakes, it drops away so you get your tires light. And that's where my crash happened because just as I was light, I braked too hard, locked the rear wheels, bam, and the car went off into the barrier. And then I was like spinning all the way down um, so it's a very, very dangerous and difficult situation to manage. But if you get it right, you also gain a lot of time. So this is a very, very difficult uh, part of the track. Uh, so late braking here from eighth gear into uh, second gear um, at around 80 meters. And then turn in quite early, carry the speed, go deep, go deep. And then slowest point is here now, turn and try and get the best exit. And here's interesting, for example, don't try and follow the track, but first straight line it to get the best traction down. Um, and not use any grip for the lateral. So you straight line it, look, it looks a bit weird. You go straight, traction, traction, and here you end of the traction limited phase. So this is the point where you then finally do the turning without losing any time because you're not traction limited anymore. It's very subtle, you won't really see that, but it's small things that really do make a difference. And then here now, very, very fast section, of course. The fastest section, you arrive in sixth gear, you downshift into fifth, really, really fast here, um, no room for error. Huh? This corner nowadays, because there's so much grip on the F1 car, is easy flat. And then here, very difficult. So hit the brakes, and then it's a very fast entry, and it just gets slower and slower and slower. Careful not to hit the, hit the arm core there on the entry, and then slower and slower, and finish braking here. Now you can get back on power. Very difficult to get this curb right here to know how much you take, because if you take a little bit too much, you bottom out, and it throws you into the barrier, which has helped, happened loads of times, I think two times in a row for Max Verstappen in subsequent years. Um, Max Verstappen who has the best uh, lap time also on this track so the lap record so far from 2018 um, okay third gear here and now we get into the last two corners which are very slow okay here we're in the legendary Raskas corner and look at the braking so it's all cornering all the time so you're like laterally loaded which makes the braking so difficult because you're loaded that way and then you're still braking and then you have to start steering the other way so it's like a, a snake form braking which makes it very very tough 
you try and straight line it as much as possible. So straight line, brake as deep as possible. And then in the very end, boom, steer. And then of course, totally blind, you can't see anything. So you steer and you only touch the second apex. The first apex you miss, the second one, that's the one you need to hit and get as close to possible. And then on the power, of course, and get a beautiful run out along the tire, along the barriers there to stay very wide for the last corner then, which is just important to get a good exit and then shortest path possible to the end of the lap. So you really hug the inside here to get to the line as quickly as possible, bang. So that was the end of the uh, slow lap, I hope it was interesting. Um, and now we run into the Q&A. Well, thanks for asking, Nicole. Um, overtaking in Monaco is just so hard, so there's not really a strategy. It's really, it's really just building up to it and then trying to go for the attack into the harbor chicane. Um, I think in my whole career, I probably had like one or two, three attempts in Monaco only to overtake. Um, fortunately, also a lot of the time I was out front, <laughs> so there was no need for overtaking. Um, but um, yeah, I remember trying in 2016, I tried to overtake Alonso into there and it just didn't work out, so I had to let him pass again. It's, it's hard. So what you do is you build up to it. You feel your way up to it and you, you, you try and get as find a way to get as close as possible out of that last corner to uh, get a good slipstream. So it's really like building up to it and then going for the attack. That's the strategy. Question two. Thanks, Frank, uh, for your answer. Yeah, qualifying in Monaco there, it's all about the rhythm that you build up from the first lap that you get out there. Um, if you do your first few laps really well already in, in free practice one, you can kind of manage to stay that one little step ahead of everybody else for, for the whole weekend because um, everybody's building up to it all weekend long and finding the limit from one lap to the next because um, it's such a tough track and, and difficult to master. Um, so that's like absolutely the key, the rhythm. And one of my most beautiful weekends ever in Formula One was 2013, where I led and I was fastest from the first lap out there throughout the whole weekend. So FP1, FP2, FP3, qualifying, race, everything. I was always P1 throughout the whole thing. Uh, and I just had the most amazing rhythm build up with ne and never made the slightest of mistakes. So that was probably my most perfect F1 weekend ever and very, very proud of that. And it led to my first Monaco Grand Prix win. Yeah, I had Antenna speaking about tunnel vision. That's a, that's a cool thing. Uh, I know what it is. It's this ultimate flow. Like when you're completely focused and, and, um, and completely in the moment and you're not thinking about future things or worries or fears or, or problems. You're just 100% in the moment and you have this inner feeling of invincibility and that nobody could be doing this better than you at this mo at this point in time. I never actually had that in Monaco. Um, I had it a handful of times in my career, only maybe three times in my whole career. It was once in go-karting. It was once in my first ever Formula One race in Bahrain, uh, where I was flying through the field from the back and I got fastest lap of the race and I came back from last to, to finish seventh. Um, and then another time, which I can't actually remember. So those are the two most uh, memorable ones for me. Um, so I can really understand what Senna was uh, saying. And it's just this complete immersion and invincibility and presence in the moment. And it's very rare uh, to find that. Yeah, Marvin, so slow and fast downshifts, there's no difference. I mean, the, the speed of the downshift is actually set up by the, by the engineers. It's done by the computer. Um, the amount of how quickly you downshift also doesn't really make a difference. Where you can make a difference is in early downshifts or late downshifts. So in the simulator, for example, in the F1, uh, F1 PlayStation game, if you downshift early, it, uh, it gives you much more deceleration on the car, so you can brake a lot later if you downshift early. So, so that's a bit of a secret strategy for the F1 PlayStation game. And in the real car, it also, um, it also has an effect because each downshift, it's not possible to be 100% smooth and perfect, even if the computer tries to be. You always get a little disturbance on the rear. And so it can make a difference sometimes to either downshift very early and get all the disturbances out of the way very early in the braking phase, and then the end of braking is very smooth, or you, you use the first braking phase to just really, really brake perfectly and use the downshifts at the very end. And so you allocate those small disturbances towards the end and accept that there's going to be a bit, bit of an unease on the rear there. And you can play with that um, and that can really make a big difference. So um, in Monaco, what skill? It's difficult. There's not one skill. I mean, it's, it's really you need to be hyper precise, more precise than on permanent tracks. It's just a, a nuance that, that some drivers really prefer these street circuits. But normally, I mean, without now giving myself credit or something, but normally the most 
talented drivers will also shine on, on street circuits. Um, that's usually kind of the tendency and we see that from Ayrton Senna. Ayrton Senna would have won Monaco seven times in a row had, had it not been for his 1988 crash where he just lacked a little bit of concentration whilst being miles in the lead. Um, so he would have won seven times in a row and, uh, and he was arguably the most talented we've ever seen in our sport. Um, so that's really, I think, um, comes down to that in the end. So that's it. I wish you an awesome Grand Prix weekend. Remember, if you answer my question, uh, your most memorable moment of all time from the Monaco Grand Prix, um, you can win something from me. So try to go, go for it and good luck with that. Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel here. Please subscribe now and then see you next time. Bye bye. The Koenigsegg Regera. <laughs> Oh my goodness!